Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Magic Geek Corner. Now, have you ever wondered how to hook up an older console to a modern TV for, you know, just to play or to stream or to capture or record gameplay for YouTube? Well, I was wondering the same thing myself and as well as many other people who have asked me before, hey, how do you even do that? Is that even possible? And it is. Now, you can just, you know, hook up your, your old consoles via the HT, or I'm sorry, VGA cables to the back of the TV. It'll work just fine. But if you're wanting to capture, then you would need a HDMI something, some form of HDMI cable for it to work. Now, I, for the longest time, uh, when I first started streaming, I was using a VGA to HDMI adapter. And yeah, it worked uh, because I wasn't quite sure how to get the stupid things to hook up to the TV. And I found that. I said, like, okay, well, this definitely works. Let me try this out. It worked for a little bit. And then I just started noticing really bad, fuzzy images uh, from the games. And I just, I needed to find a different option to have this work because I didn't want to have to be streaming it and then get up to fix the cable so that a green line would, you know, go away from my screen. I, I just, I didn't want to deal with that every time I was streaming one of these games. So that's when I came across pound cables and hyperkin cables. And I'm just like, wow, what are these? And it's basically it does everything that the VGA to HDMI does, just only a little bit better. Um, the picture's not fuzzy. The picture is very clear. Um, the, the SNES pound cable has a, a, some slight issues, but none that are game-breaking or anything like that. And I'm going to cover all of the cables for every retro system I have. Uh, but we're going to be starting with a peculiar system today and that is the PSP and you might be asking yourself how in the world do you get a PSP to play on the TV at all uh, there is a way now you can do you know the PSP component cables to the, uh, just hook them into the the bottom of the console itself but those cables are very hard to find and they're very expensive um, so I'm gonna show you the method I use and what you will need in order for this to work. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so you're actually going to need three things for this to work. First of all, you're going to need your PSP. Now, this only works with the 3000 model and the 2000 model. It does not work with the 1000 model and it does not work with the PSP Go. And if you're hoping for it to work with the PS Vita, uh, they kind of screwed us on you know HD output on that so there's a whole different beast of a way for that to work and I don't have any of that to even you know bother with so you're going to need the PSP next you're going to need your Hyperkin cable sorry I was covering my face now it has a zoom sorry wrong side it has a zoom and a default and I'll show you how that works Maybe it would just a zoom because default makes the picture a little small unless you're playing like a PS1 game, which we're really not going to test any of those. Uh, this is more of just testing the PSP games itself. Now, one cool thing about this cable is that it has a built-in HDMI, so you don't have to worry about, you know, having any, any extra cables or anything like that. Uh, and then you have your headphone jack basically is what it is that's going to plug into the psp and this is what's going to make it you know capture on the tv now let's go ahead and show you how to hook this up what you're going to do is you're going to plug it into there you go plug it in right there goes where the headphones normally go uh it's easy to see how to plug it in because you know if you've ever plugged in the headphones or the sorry the PSP headphones into the the PSP then you know it's got that little headphone jack part and then the little computer chip looking thing uh, next up you're going to need to plug in a micro SD card or my sorry micro SD cable into the hyperkin cable and you'll see that the little blue dot or blue light is on implying it's got power it only works with the micro SD cable plugged in. If you try and run it without that cable plugged in, it's not gonna work. And 
a lot of times the hyperkin and the pound cables they only work if they have that cable plugged in so if you're trying to run a psp or a dreamcast or an n64 you have to have the micro sd cable plugged in otherwise it's not going to work now the older systems like the genesis and the snes you don't really need to worry about plugging those in or anything like that they'll, they'll run without the cable plugged in um so with that being said let's go ahead and take a look at some games and see what those look like on the big screen okay guys so when you get the psp hooked up to the monitor you're not going to see the picture just yet you have to actually do some tweaking uh so you'll see this no signal here and this only pops up on the hdmi cables for pound and hyperkin when you have the usb micro uh, cable plugged into the actual adapter and everything so what you want to do on the psp uh, normally what you would do on you know the other systems is you just power it on and boom you get the picture and everything but the psp you have to do something a little bit different you need to go over to your settings then you need to go down to where it says connected display settings now once i hit this option uh you're gonna see it pop up you're gonna hit connected display settings and then you're going to hit switch video output so i'm gonna hit that now uh, there's gonna be a message that pops up that says do you want to display video output on the connected device you can go back to display video output on this system by turning the system on and off so uh, basically you can go back and forth you want to hit yes on that and it should pop up right now okay there we go we have the video now it's a little zoomed in yes because um, I have the HDMI cable hooked up to the or sorry set on the zoom option instead of default now normally when it's default the screen for the main menu will look fine but once you play a PSP game it will be very small almost about the size of the PSP screen if you were to hold it up to your TV itself now if you're gonna play any PSP games you want to have it in zoom that way it will fill the whole screen but if you're gonna play something like a PS1 game that you have on the the PSP uh, leave it in default because those will be zoomed in really bad and you can't change the display setting in game on PS1 games. I've tried it. Uh, normally when you play them on the PSP, it gives you the option to do uh, you know, custom, zoom, fit the screen, full screen, however you want. But if you're using the cable to play a PS1 game through the PSP, it will be zoomed in if you have it on anything but default. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into some games. But before we do that, if you enjoy any of the gameplay you see here today, please be sure to check out that Twitch link down below. I will be streaming all the PSP games I own, and I might even be doing a couple games to cover on my Good Game, Bad Game series that I just started last week. You can also check out the video for that too for the first episode. Um, right now, we are streaming God of War on Twitch. We are doing the whole God of War series, getting ready for Ragnarok. Uh, so... Depending on when you see this video, uh, we will be starting God of War 2 the week after Christmas. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into Twisted Metal head-on first. Okay guys, so we have Twisted Metal head-on. This is one of the very first PSP games. It was actually a launch PSP title back in 2005. Man, that feels like so long ago. Um, I had this game. This was one of my first games for the PSP that I bought. and. I really enjoyed it a lot. Oh, going into the demo. Let's uh let's actually get into the game itself before we start talking a little bit. Okay, okay. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I like how the low screen is the empty and full gas tank. So yeah, this was a PSP launch title. I had it back in the day. I played it. Oh man, I played this game so much. And what I'm most upset about was that I lost my game save that had everything it was a complete game save i lost it because the memory card got corrupted and i should have just copied it to another memory card or another to my ps3 or computer or something so that i would have had it still but you know i don't mind starting the game over again from fresh um now don't judge me but i'm using cheats here because this game is very very challenging and it is definitely something that you know 
they, they sh shouldn't fault people for using cheats in this game, especially Twisted Metal Black. That game is ridiculous in difficulty. Uh, so, Mr. Grimm, sorry, man, but we're going to take you out here. Oh, wow, we got two people here. Oh, look at this, a challenge. Shooting rink bonus. Oh, what is this? <laughs> this is this is funny. Oh, this is actually pretty hard. Oh. That was easy. I mean, this is good if you're using cheats cuz you don't have to worry about, you know, getting blown up or anything. And the thing is, these challenges unlock other characters too. I'm actually going to skip out of this one. I wasn't intending to do that. Uh, maybe I'll do it on my streams. I do like when you have the car powered up all the way. Now, you, it's easy to get the cars powered up easy. If you just kill enemies, uh, you can upgrade your car fully all the way through. But I think if you die, it goes away and you have to start over. I'm not really sure. I don't remember if that's the case or not, but it might be the case. You might, you know, run out of all the upgrades and everything once you die. Okay, who is the... Is that... I forget the... Uh, I think they took the name Warhawk from the game and made that the dump truck guy, or the construction truck guy, but I can't remember. We'll find out what his name is right now. I'm going to destroy him and see mr. slam I was way off Wow Wow that was completely off now one thing I will say guys when you're using your PSP on the TV I don't recommend plugging it into the charger at least with the hypergen cable maybe in general I'm not sure if, if it does it for other options but it causes a wave on the screen, and it's very, 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 very annoying. Um, so if you're if you're planning on streaming your PSP on the you know YouTube or something, uh, people will see the wavy image, and it's not cool. So I recommend charging your PSP before you are going to do any recording of any kind, especially if you're going to record for a long period of the time. Okay, so we've destroyed two people. Let's go ahead and jump into another game. We're going to go ahead and take a look at. Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles, another favorite of mine. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, here we go. Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles. Now, one thing I want to point out first. You may recognize these two games. They were released on the PS4 two years ago in a Castlevania collection. That collection was actually this game minus the Dracula X Chronicles game. I don't know why they didn't put that one in there too because it is a fun game and I'm not I'm not sure why I'm not sure why but then I think back it's Konami we don't question their decisions anymore um I mean it, they used to be so good I don't know what happened to them I don't know what happened because Castlevania is one of those series that is just in limbo right now that one and Metal Gear Silent Hill all three of those series are just in limbo we don't know what's going on with them so with that being said let's go ahead and jump into the actual game Don't laugh. I know Alucard. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I use that character name for pretty much all the Castlevanias uh, back in the in the day. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start. I wanted to do stage two because the level I left off on is incredibly tough, and I don't want to get my butt kicked in the, uh, in the video here. So let's go ahead and start. Now, keep in mind, this is a remake of Rondo. Rondo of Blood. So everything that happened in that game happens in this one too. So if you go a certain route in 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 the levels, you're gonna go. It's gonna take you the same same places in this one. So if you take the bottom route in level one, you're gonna go to the you know the route that way. If you go the top way, you're gonna go that way. So same thing as the original game. And what's good is this does have the original game. 
So this is one of the very, very first times I ever played Rondo of Blood. I had played Dracula X on Super Nintendo, which is a port of that game, but it's not near... It's not near the same. That... The original game has the cool animated style cutscenes. And I'm about to get my butt handed to me anyways. I really wish you could have run in this game. But they didn't let Richter start running until Symphony of the Night for the few sec. I mean, if you're playing as him in the main game, cool, you can run too. But if you don't want to play as him in the main game, you really can't run in that game either. Music's all remastered or redone as well. I'm glad they kept the music the same. I always hated these eyeballs. Ah, I got killed by a zombie. Dang. Let's try that again. This... This might be the level where the, the bull... Comes run or the Minotaur, it's not at the bowl, but Minotaur comes running after you. I'll tell you what, these games, not easy. These original Castlevania games, not easy at all. It wasn't until the Metroidvania games where they started giving you a little bit of a, you know, helping hand with the health items and everything. I mean, I like all Castlevanias, really. I don't really care. Metroidvania, regular Castlevania, um, you name it, I love all of them. I guess that only works when you have enemies coming after you. And see, this one actually has, like, light cutscenes and everything, too. So, let's go ahead and get on... I think... Yes, I knew it. Now, the only crummy thing, I think, here is if you didn't get the key... Aww. If you didn't get the key, you can't save... Maria. So it's almost like you want to play this game twice just to see the outcome of all the levels. Because you can go either way, like I said, you can go up or down. Oh my, he's still here. <laughs> now in Symphony of the Night, you actually do see that Minotaur again in one of the areas in the catacombs. I mean, sorry, the Colosseum. You see him in the background. Oh, right, if you pick up the key, you can't use any... You can't use any weapons. Not normally Maria would be in here and you'd save her and everything. Stopwatch. I love the stopwatch. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into another game. Uh, We're going to jump into Death Jr., a game I have not played in about 15 years. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. All right, so here we go with Death Jr. Now, this is a game I played once. Uh, it also came out the same year as the PSP. Um, I remember actually renting this from Blockbuster, believe it or not. They had PSP games for a little bit. So I rented this from Blockbuster and played it, and I thought it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Another Konami game, and you're kind of like, hey, you know, what happened, guys? <laughs> So let's go ahead and start a new game, because I don't think I have any saves here. Alright, what happened? Sweep, or seep, sorry, not sweep. 
Dead cup? What? Uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Oh, these must be all his friends. What's wrong with them? So we got no... We have no voice at all. Now, this game was reminiscent of Medieval. It reminded me of that. This is the only way... Oh, too late. I guess I went too far. I don't even know what that said. This game reminded me a lot of Medieval. What do we got? Pick up four health extenders to increase damage resistance. Okay. What was that? That was a bat. Come on, death. Kill demons and release their souls. Oh, so we're good. We got an Onimusha thing going on here. As a Reaper, DJ collects souls. <laughs> DJ collects souls automatically. The bottom right corner shows how many he has. DJ can use souls to open eye doors like this one. What is this thing? Pick up four assist extenders to get more assist stocks. Okay. That works. Right? We got one soul. If DJ doesn't have enough souls for an eye door, check the bottom right corner. See how many he needs. Well, obviously, I need three. We got three. We're good. Three. Let's get on out of here. Like, I really don't remember this game at all from when I played it. Okay, so strafe. Okay. That's interesting. Skulls give DJ health. Kind of reminds me of Skull Monkeys, too, a little bit. Just with the enemy variety. What's this? I kind of figured that one out on my own. What happens if I destroy the soda machine? A whole lot of nothing. Got it. Oh, you still get destruction for, you know, destroying things. Okay. Okay. Works. Got a... Pick up weapon widgets. To... Oh, okay. Improve your weapons. Press select to see how many health extenders, weapon widgets, assist extenders, and souls DJ has. Let's pause. Oh, cool. I like that. Oh, collect the bomb. We got Banjo-Kazooie up in here. Psyche piece. These are fragments of DJ's friends. Wow, that sounds... DJ must find all the pieces to save them. The museum. Oh, okay. Okay. The, oh, too late. <laughs> it took too long to read it. I don't want to spend too much time on the cutscenes. Suburbia seeps hood. Okay. What am I doing in seeps neighborhood? I don't see there. It looks like skull monkeys with the these guys. Oh, he's got guns too. Well, bloody freaking da, right? It actually feels like Edward Scissorhands in this neighborhood more than anything. Now, there is a Death Junior 2. Um, like I said, never played that one. Because I really didn't play this one a whole lot. I played, you know, maybe... Actually, I don't even remember how much of this I played before. But I... It was a good chunk of the game. And the lack of a second joystick is not making this game any easier. I want to see what that said. Also gives DJ combo points. Okay, got it.
Well, that just worked out great, didn't it? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No! Alright, there's gotta be an easier way up there. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Ooh! That little zip line there, okay. Get away from me, skull monkeys. I probably need a bunch of souls to get through that eye door. Eye door. Sounds like eye gore. Okay. Uh, I want to take a look at one more game before we end the video here. We're going to take a look at Medieval Resurrection. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. Okay, guys, so we have our final game that we're taking a look at in the video here, and that is Medieval Resurrection. Now, this is an all-time favorite game of mine. I loved the original. I loved... Well, I didn't really play Medieval 2 very much, but I played the first game a lot. I loved that one. I loved Resurrection. Uh, I did not know this game had multiplayer. I kind of forgot about that. But um, this was technically the first remake that we had. Now, when you play through the remaster on PS4, that is what it is. It's a remaster of the old game. This was actually a remake because some things happened in this game that didn't happen in the original. And there are some characters that are in this game that weren't in the original. Like the guy, the little dude in his eye socket. That guy was not in the original as far as I know. Or as far as I can remember, he was not in it. So let's go ahead and load a game because I have the original game save I used for this which has gone from my first PSP to my um, to my PS Vita back to my newest PSP that I have here. Then 20. Oh. That must have been when I loaded everything up. Gotcha. I was, uh, I guess I was starting a new game somewhere. Okay, we'll just play the graveyard. The graveyard. You wouldn't catch me digging graves in my yard. Spoils <laughs> the ambience. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> Holy crap, what is that? Oh. Uh, I don't remember if there was a New Game Plus or not, but... Apparently I have a bunch of swords. I sense Zarok is very close by. Maybe I'm sure he hill, is. Which lies just beyond this graveyard. Ah, real shiny stabby sword. Let's try it out. Okay, I remember this one being a little bit more difficult than the original. The only good thing about this one that I, I prefer over the original is the the camera is a little bit easier to maneuver. Because the old game, the camera was so difficult to, you know, that was probably your worst enemy in that game. And I'm probably going to cover that on the uh, retro recap or the good game, bad game in a future episode. Sound effects are the same, at least for the souls. Dan still sounds like he's muffled because obviously he doesn't have a jaw. Bottom jaw, he's got a skull and that's it. If you guys played the original, or I'm sorry, the remaster, let me know what you thought about it because I enjoyed that one a lot. It was definitely, they... they they did a great job with that. I wish they would make a remaster for the second game, but I think because 
The first one didn't do so well. It wasn't a very well-known PS1 game. It was a cult classic among a few fans. Not like Crash Bandicoot or Spyro where everybody freaking knew what that was. They knew what those two games were. This one, a lot of people really didn't know what Medieval was. I mean, I, there are people who I know who they know what this is. But if I was to talk to a casual gamer who, you know, when they were younger, all they played was, you know, Goldeneye or, you know, sports games, they're not going to know what Medieval is. I mean, this looks really good on the TV. I'll give them that. I will give them that for this cable. This looks really great with this game. Oh, hey. Hey. Let's uh, just smash this with a hammer. Oh, crap. Is this like one-hit kill sword or something? I can't even tell what I'm, <laughs> what I'm attacking here. So much going on at once. See, I remember the gargoyles not even the same voice as the original game. Hello, stranger. What can I sell you today? A nice bit of schmatter? No. No, not today. He sounds like he's drunk, though. Ooh, what's in here? Oh, more zombies. I really need to play through this one again, just so I can remember how all the levels look. Because, obviously, this is completely different from the original, this level. Yes, it's the same setup, but there's areas that are different. So, it was like when Capcom did Resident Evil 1. All the areas looked completely different. Um, some of them looked the same as the original, but there were some that looked totally different. Alright, since I'm technically lost in this level now, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and end the testing of that game there. So, as you can see, all of the games look really great on the TV. Um, definitely, definitely, if you're interested in getting that cable, you can find it online. Um, I, like I said, I think there's a Pound Technologies one, but I'm not entirely sure because when I looked it up, they all came up at the same time. I had Pound Cables, I had Hyper King Cables. I didn't know which one was which. Like, I just thought they were all the same thing. They all do the same thing, but the Hyper King, I think they were the only ones who made a PSP cable, uh, which is capable of doing the HDMI, you know, to PSP and everything. And like I said, I'm going to play all these games on my Twitch channel, so you can definitely check those out. Uh, we will be starting, actually, the first PSP game I plan to stream is probably going to be Silent Hill when I do the marathon next year. I'm going to start with Silent Hill 1 and then jump into Origins, play that one, uh, because Origins kind of spoils stuff that happens in Silent Hill 1. Um, but with that being said, I, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this you know, tutorial setting up and everything helps you out with, you know, trying to get this working if you would like. Um, if you want to try the VGA to HDMI adapter, definitely feel free to try that way as well. Um, I just have not tried it with a uh, PSP, so I'm not sure how well it will work. Now, if you happen to have PSP component cables, then you can definitely, I think you can try that too. I think it'll work that way too. I think the component cables were... The red, or sorry, the VGA PSP cables were red, white, and yellow. Because a friend of mine, she did the same thing, and she said she used those, uh, those cables. So um, definitely, if you want to do that way as well, I mean, not gonna fault you here. Uh, if if it works, if it does work, please let me know. I'd I'd love to know if it how it worked out for you using the VGA method. Uh, but with that being said. Really hope you guys enjoyed the video, um, as I said before. Uh, if you did enjoy the video and you would like to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel, ringing in that bell to be notified of when new videos go live. I will be getting 
a lot more content going into the new year. I have a list of good game, bad game episodes that I would love to cover. I have a list of movie recaps, retro recaps. I'm just working on editing those together right now. They take a little bit longer than videos like this, which is why I like to do stuff like this so that I can get some content for you guys. That way, you know, you're not waiting two or three months for the next video to pop up. So check them out. Uh, check out all the links down below. You can follow me at all my socials. Share with your friends and family. And as always, guys, I will see you on the next episode. Y'all take it easy. Have a good rest of your day. And if you are seeing this late, uh, Merry Christmas anyways. Happy holidays. Uh, however, you, Whatever you celebrate, um, have a good holiday. And I will see you guys in the new year.